am Dave Cartoon, and I anchor the morning news on WSAB. Uh, I am a product of public schools, although not Savannah Chatham public schools. Uh, I am the husband of a public school teacher and the father of two public school students here. And public schools are extremely important to me. And I love this series that happens here. This is called the Passport to Excellence. It's the third in a series. We had Stratton Leopold. Uh, I hope you know Leopold's ice cream. Uh, he's also a big time Hollywood uh, producer and a product of Savannah Chatham Public Schools. Talk about how you can go anywhere from here. And the lovely Dawn Baker talking about her experience in Savannah Chatham Public Schools and how it can take you anywhere or sometimes back here. And today we have a special guest who I think is perfect for this group because you guys here at Woodville Tompkins are into so many things. And this guy is into so many things and just knows how to get places. So I'm delighted to introduce him, but first we're gonna say thank you to a couple of people that make this possible. Uh, first, uh, JCB, uh, who you guys probably all know. Um, some of you might even work there. I'm not sure if they have a program as part of this school, but they are, um, of course, founded by Joseph Cyril Bamford in 1945. They began 70 years ago with one small machine in a small garage and a philosophy of continual innovation. And from there, they've developed into a privately held global company with 11,000 employees, including many here in our area, manufacturing a range of over 300 products on four continents, sold through a dealer network of 2,000 locations, including a big factory here that employs a lot of people. They've been in Savannah for 15 years and made investments in a local facility, which employs 500 of our friends and neighbors, and manufactures the world's safest skid steer, the world's best-selling backhoe loader, and the world's toughest backhoe loader in use by the United States military. So please give JCB a round of applause and a big thank you for putting this on. Uh, we'd also like to say thank you to AT&T. If Ryan and Warren would like to come up and bask in the glow of applause and thanks. Where, where did you go, Ryan? There you are. Come on up. Well, AT&T helps millions around the globe connect with leading entertainment, mobile high-speed internet, and voice services. AT&T first launched its It Can Wait campaign about five years ago, asking drivers across the country to keep their eyes on the road. And let me find that person. No, nobody's got their eyes on the Oh, Dr. Levette's got her eyes on her device. There she is. Keep your eyes off the devices when you're on the road. Uh, they are continuously seeking to help students in our area and build stronger communities by supporting initiatives such as Passport to Excellence. Please say thank you and welcome to Ryan Warren. And Ryan, if you'd like to say a few words, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for sharing. Great to see the next generation of our leaders, you know, come together and, and make a stand and do something good for yourselves. Uh, so again, just on behalf of AT&T, we'd we'll like to thank everybody for coming today. All right, thank you, Ryan. We'd also like to say thank you to a few more sponsors. 24E, if you've seen them on Broad Street, they've got the coolest furniture around and they've blessed us with a pretty neat little talk show set up here uh, today. Also, uh, Healthy Savannah, Cecilia Russo Marketing, uh, and Carriage Trade PR, and Marjorie Young. So thank you. Before we get started with Howard, uh, I'd like to introduce to you your leader, Dr. Thomas Lockerbie, the superintendent here at Public Schools. Under his leadership, the district for the first time has surpassed the state's graduation rate, and joins us now to say a few words, Dr. Lockerbie. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so happy to be here and to celebrate this occasion uh, with Howard Larson, his family, his friends, and with all of my students. And I want to tell you congratulations. You know, this school had 100% graduation all the time, the only high school in the county and in Savannah that has achieved that goal. Let's give it a little This school is something to be reckoned with. Our graduation rate district-wide was above the state average for the first time in the history this past year. We're going to top that this year. We have 81.3% graduation all time, four years. Quite an achievement. And uh, today I have been notified that the Bartlett STEM School is the number one middle school in the nation. I'm quite an achievement. 
and we're going to be celebrating uh, that recognition uh, coming up soon. We're so proud of all the graduates of uh, Savannah Chatham County, and I know that we have spotlighted three this year, and we're going to continue doing this each year. Uh, this was a pilot that came to me uh, with two young ladies, uh, Marjorie Young from Carrie's Trader, and Senior Russo. Uh, she moved. Uh, but, uh, these two ladies came to me and said, you know, you've got some outstanding graduates of this school history. Let's spotlight them and let the public know what is happening in Savannah Chatham County. This year we've highlighted three. Next year we're going to find more. You, my students out here, will be here one day as you become the next generation of professionals, of entrepreneurs, of all of those who are going to make this world a better place. And I know because this school started out as a high school many, many years ago, and then it changed to a middle school. It became a failing school. And this was one of the first schools that I actually emptied and started all over again. This school today is in the top three high schools in the district and has the 100% graduation rate and these young people are your future leaders. So let's give you know, everyone a round of applause and let's welcome Mr. Marshall. Your next leader down the road would like to tell you a few things as well. You know him as your principal. I consider him my friend. Please say hello to Mr. Alfred McGuire, your principal. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Guys, we are very excited to have this great opportunity today. We often talk about, um, when, we, when you guys come to school, about making those next steps and taking those steps forward. And often about what it means to be successful, not just while you're here at Woodville Tompkins, but beyond that. So while you're going through the various programs that you're here for, whether that's culinary arts, whether that's healthcare sciences, we want to make sure that you have every opportunity available to you to be successful. Today is just another one of those opportunities that you have. We have Mr. Morrison who's coming and he has a wealth of experience and a wealth of knowledge that he has graciously came this, morning, this afternoon and decided to share with you on today. I hope that you take advantage of this opportunity. I hope that you write down some notes, but really you take those nuggets with you. It's often said that the greatest crime is receiving information and doing nothing with it. But you have an opportunity today to not only receive the information, do something with it, but more importantly, share it with someone else. And so I hope that you have an opportunity to do that today. I won't take any more time because I know Mr. Morrison is very excited about his opportunity to speak to you today. But thank you guys again for being here, and we look forward to a great program. we got a couple other people that we want to say hello to uh, this morning. Uh, I've already given her a hard time, but she should also stand up and be recognized. Uh, she's the Chief Academic Officer uh, of the school district, and if there's something you want to know about what you're learning or what you're doing next, she's the person you want to going to want to find after this, uh, because I'm going to chase her down too. Uh, please stand, Dr. Ann Lebet. Our former school board president, Dr. Joe Buck, is here. Please say hello to him. And my favorite police officer in the whole world is here. Your school district police chief, Terry Enoch, is here too. Say hi to him. Do we have any other current or former board members who are joining us? Okay. Let's get to it then. What I love about Woodville Tompkins and why I think Howard Morrison is the perfect person to come and speak to you guys today is that you guys are just into everything. Who's done the piloting program? Who's done the, keep your hands up. Who's done the firefighting program? Who's done the culinary program? Who's done personal finance? Who's done police? So there's police, who's done Gulfstream? And those are just the ones that I can rattle off now. We were talking about it with some of the students before this started. I'm not gonna start doing when I was your age. We went to six classes, they were all the same, 
and all we fought over were the teachers we got. It's so neat to come here and see all the things that you're into. And the reason why I think it's special to have Howard here talk about the future uh, for you and where public schools can take you is because Howard is not only into everything, but raise your hand again if, if you want to do the same old thing when you graduate from high school or college. Nobody does, right? Who wants to do the next thing? Who wants to do something new? And that's what Howard has always been doing. So I will introduce the prepared remarks for you now and introduce Howard, but that's what excites me about what we're going to talk about here today, because you can get there from here. Uh, Howard Morrison has devoted a lifetime of service advocating educational and entrepreneurial related initiatives. He attended Massey School. You know, it's a heritage center now. It used to be a school. Uh, from the second grade to the sixth grade in Savannah, he went to Yale. You've probably heard it there. And he's also a veteran of the U.S. Navy. He had a banking career that spanned nearly 30 years. He helped to develop the CNS Banks and now Bank of America's High Technology Banking Group and Atlanta's High Technology Business Community. As a result, in 1995, he was inducted into the Georgia High Technology Hall of Fame. After retiring from banking back in, Jan uh, in July of 1996, Howard returned here to his hometown of Savannah, and his family has been here forever. You're probably his cousin somehow, if you grew up here. He was instrumental in establishing the organization that's evolved into the Creative Coast. You guys know what the Creative Coast is? It's the place where new businesses are growing every day and getting advice and trying to get off the ground. It used to be known as Coastal Business, Education and Technology Alliance. He also helped to organize the Savannah Fund for Excellence in Public Education, which was merged into the All Foundation, and in initiating and developing the Georgia Tech Savannah Campus, so that you guys have access to take Georgia Tech classes here in Savannah. From 1999 to 2007, he served as the board secretary and chair of the Innovation and Technology Committee of the Georgia Department of Industry, Trade, and Tourism, which is now the Georgia Department of Economic Development. The Coastal Business Education and Technology Alliance established in 2013 an outstanding leadership award in his name, with Howard being honored as the first recipient. In 2003, the Georgia Tech Alumni Association named Howard an honorary alumnus for 2004. In October 2009, he was inducted into the Savannah Business Hall of Fame by Junior Achievement of Georgia. In 2011, he received Savannah Technical College's Opportunity Award. I told you he's everywhere. He currently serves as chair of the Professional Association of Georgia Educators Foundation, the vice chair of the Board of Governors at Mercer University School of Medicine, Savannah Campus, and as chairman emeritus of the advisory board for the Georgia Tech Savannah Campus. In the past, he served as chairman of the Georgia Tech Research Corporation, chair of the Skidaway Marine Science Foundation on the boards of Armstrong Atlantic, Savannah Technical College, both of Georgia Southerns, and Savannah State's Colleges of Science and Technology, South University, and the University of Georgia Research Foundation. He cares about education, and he's here to answer your questions and engage and talk to you, not about what it was like when he was your age where we're all going to go next. Please welcome my friend, Howard Morris. Okay, it's an honor to be with you today. I can't stand sitting and standing behind uh, uh, podium, so I'm going to go get out here in front of you so I can, uh, can talk. I was uh, going to say that I, sh I should have uh, basically talked to Dr. Lockamy ahead of time, Dr. Lockamy, because I was going to tell him that they were number one, but you have told me in private conversations that they're not just one of the three best. They are the best high school in Savannah. And Mr. McGuire has told me that eight out of ten of the graduating students at Woodville Tompkins have advanced uh, placement credits. So they will go to college with credits already in the bag. Congratulations to you for that. But, but today I want to talk to you about opportunity. And I want to remind you that today is the last day of the first day of the rest of your life. Today is the first day of the last rest of your life. And it's about learning. It's about learning how to solve problems. It's lifelong learning. And the biggest problems that we have in the world are people problems. They're not the 
um, left brain problems, but there's a, the right brain people problems. And the way to solve those people problems is through empathy. Put yourself in their shoes and see what happens. And so today what I'd like to do is to uh, do what I'm supposed to do, and that is tell you a little bit about what it was like to be at Massey, what was going on in the world at that time. Uh, what did I learn at Massey? What did I learn from other people? Uh, I actually found my report card, so I'm going to have to express, show you my report cards for four years. And then I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, success and failure and what success and failure really means. Okay, it's 1950. The Second World War ended five years ago. The Korean crisis is in full swing. We are worried about Russia dropping atomic bombs on us. And so we have civil defense drills along with the fire drills. We don't have mechanical pencils, we have wooden pencils. We don't have television, there was no television in Savannah in 1950, none, zero, not even black and white TV. We were a segregated school. We were a neighborhood school. So what did I learn at Massey? Well, I learned about the, uh, the Tinker Man, and I'm sure that Joe Buck knows about the Tinker Man. I really ought to get him to come up and talk about the Tinker Man. But uh, every time when I came home from school, my mother would ask me, what happened at school today? And I would tell her, and one day I came home and she said, well, what did you learn at school today? And I said, well, I learned about the Tinker Man. And she said, well, what's that all about? And I said, well, it's about, uh, you know, children are supposed to do what their parents tell them to do. Sounds good. Next day I come home and my mother asked me the same question, tell me about the Tinker Man. I said, well, you're not supposed to steal things uh, that don't belong to you. If it doesn't belong you, to you, leave it alone. And she thought that was a pretty good idea, too. About the third day, she came home and talked to me about the Tinker Man. And I told her about the Tinker Man. And uh, it was about, uh, you know, don't say things about people that aren't true. And after about the third or fourth day, my mother got real curious. This was in the fourth grade. And so she called Mrs. Register at the school and she said, Howard has been talking about the Tinker Man all week. What in the world have you been talking about? I want a copy of that book. Silence on the other end of the phone. Mrs. Register had no idea what my mother was talking about. She said, well, the only thing that we've been studying this week are the Ten Commandments. <laughs> and I had mispronounced Ten Commandments, and my mother thought that was pretty good. But my point to you is that among the things that I learned in school were the basic lessons of the Ten Commandments. Um, there were other things that I learned, like responsibility. Like the first day of class, I was walked to school. From that point on, I walked to school on my own. I was part of the boys' patrol. I learned responsibility for showing uh, students across the street and crossing uh, busy street uh, corners. I learned also to tell the truth, and I got in trouble. There was a little girl named Charlie Richardson in the fourth grade, and she would tease me no end. And one day she was teasing me, and I decided I was going to get even. And you know what I did? I chased her into the little girl's room. And I knew that little boys were not supposed to go in the little girl's room. Well, within five minutes, I was in the principal's office. Mrs. Saxon Bargeron, who ultimately was a superintendent of school. And Dr. Lockamy, we need to name a school for her. And she said, Howard, why were you in the little girl's room? And I said, well, Charlie Richardson was teasing me, and I got mad with her, and I chased her into the little girl's room. 
And she said, well, you know you're not supposed to do that. Will you promise me that you'll never do that again? And I said, yes, ma'am. And so when I got home, what does my mother ask me? What happened in school today? A little bit of a pregnant pause there. I said, Mama, I got in trouble. Well, what did you do? I chased Charlie Richardson in the little girl's room. And she said, well, you told me the truth. I'm not going to get mad with you for telling me the truth. And so that was another one of the many lessons that I learned while I was at Massey. But, but I also learned some other um, messages uh, over the life. My grandmother lived on a farm where I live now. And she would tell me stories about things in the family. One of the stories was about an uncle that didn't want to go to college. He went to high school and decided he didn't want to go to college. And my grandfather, who I really didn't know, asked him, well, what do you want to do? He said, I want to be a farmer. And so my uncle said, okay, I'll be a farmer. So my grandfather gave him a mule and a plow, and he let him go plow the fields. And after about two weeks, he came back to my grandfather and he said, you know, I've been a farmer. I think I'd rather go to college. And so he decided, yes, I'll go to college. But this message that was there was, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And that was the message that I got from my grandfather through my grandmother. My grandmother's expression was, is something a reason or is it an excuse? And telling the truth is telling her people what the reason is. An excuse is not always truthful. My father had an expression, be fair, be firm, be kind, be consistent. So the two words that I take out of that is to always be fair and always be kind. An uncle told me, business kinds of things. He said, you know, we can talk about business all day long. But what's really, really important in life is memories. And it's memories of people and things that you did with people and friends that you had. And those lessons continued. I learned some valuable lessons from my bosun mate, uh, Dow, when I went on my first ship in the Navy. Jay Cross in the back of the room understands that. I learned a lot from a friend of mine uh, at the bank in Atlanta, Doug McKeever, and the uh, Home Depot that I could sell if I had time. And then more recently, I learned from uh, my partner today in a ginger turmeric business, Ross Hart. I told you before I found my uh, Massey School grades. I'm not real proud of them, but I'm going to show them to you anyway. <laughs> there, there are two categories of grades. One the left brain grades, the other the right brain grades. The left brain grades are the ones that are the math, the arithmetic, the writing, the, writing, the things that you can say yes or no to. The right brain skills are the people skills. And I want to read to you the things that were on the report card that I got in the second grade. Trying to do a share of the group, depending upon himself whenever possible, showing consideration and courtesy, care and use of school materials, keeping well occupied, and one that I think is very important, making an effort to improve. And I'm going to repeat that one, making an effort to improve. improve and then responding quickly to directions. The third, fourth, and fifth grade, they changed these. And I'm not going to read them all, but I want to read the third up from the bottom. Get so long well with others. There are a lot of life uh, messages there. So how did I do in the second grade? I was really proud of myself in the second grade. I got a whole lot of S's. I didn't get any E's for excellent. And I got one in, and I was so 
embarrassed by that one end that I tried to erase it. And if you look at this report card, you will see that Howard Morrison, seven years old, tried to erase the end off of the report card because I was mortified that I would go home. What would my mother and father say if I got a single end in my second grade? So I get promoted to the third grade. Much better. How about this? No in grades. And an E for Epsom. I did my share of the group. I was tardy only one time, having never been tardy in the first, second grade. So here we are, third grade report card. I'm, I'm proud of this. I, I learned from my experiences. I took advantage of the opportunity of what uh, had happened in the second grade. So how do you think we do in the fourth grade? Well, obviously a continuation of that uh, incredible record that I'm building up. Two e grades, social studies. Only tardy twice. I think I'm impressed. But you know what? I forgot to talk about the ends. Eighteen ends. I got eighteen ends in the fourth grade. There were six grading periods. I got five ends in arithmetic. I got three ends in writing. And I got a whole lot of other ends in things that I shouldn't have gotten ends in. And my being late to class, twice. So I went from never being late in the first grade, once in the second grade, first year, twice in the, in, the, uh, in the fourth grade. There it is. There's the bad news. And if you look carefully, there's an N under shows self-control right over here. That is the Charlie Richards. The little girls were in. And Dawn, if you teased me, I would have done the same thing to you. And I would have caught you. So did I learn anything from the, second, from, from the fourth grade? Well, let's see. Here we are in the fifth grade. No ends, but my ends have gone down. Only three ends in arithmetic, three ends in spelling, and I am tardy how many times? 21 times tardy. Dr. Lockamy, I don't think I'm going to make it. I am, this is, this is not a good effort at all. And there it is. So now the question is, was I successful or was I not? And what defines success or failure? And is being successful in school getting good grades alone? Or is it learning from those mistakes and failures? And do we really in life learn maybe even more from our failures than we do sometimes from our successes? I want to give you a good example of that. There's a little company that makes a product called WD-40. Anybody here not heard of WD-40? Okay, everybody's heard of WD-40. Was the person that developed WD-40 a success or was that person a failure? Who wants to take a guess? What do you think? For success or failure? Absolutely. How could he possibly be successful? He failed 39 times. The product is called Water Dispersal 40th Try. 39 failures, one success. We ought to go, Ted, you and I need to start a new company, WD-41. <laughs> good idea, good entrepreneurial business. But my point is, whether you pass 
whether you get an N, an S, or an E, probably isn't really what makes a difference. What makes a difference is learning. Learning from your mistakes, learning from your failures, and never giving up. And when I was uh, in high school, I actually got a perfect score on one of my uh, math uh, uh, final exams. The only person in the class to get a perfect score on a math uh, final exam. And when I graduated ultimately from school, everybody in the class got an award. You know, valedictorian, salvedictorian, most likely to succeed, best football team, best poet, best this, best that, best the other thing. I didn't get any best grades or rewards. But at the end of the graduation ceremony, the head of the school said, we've given all these wonderful awards out, but there's one other person that's in the graduating class that I'd just like to say something about. He didn't get any rewards. But I want to tell you that this is a young man who exhibited honest and persistent effort. And that person is Howard Morrison. Honest and persistent effort. The, 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 the word to remember there is effort. So how do you live your life? remembering that today is the first day of the rest of your life. Obviously, I want you to do well in school here today, this year, and while you're at Woodville Tompkins. But at the same time, I want you to listen to grandparents, parents, uncles, and other people that you interact with. Because there's a lot of wisdom that you can learn from them. I want you to choose the right job, and I want you to be interested and enthusiastic about the employment opportunity that you take. And then the most important decision that you will make in your entire life, the most important decision that you'll make in your entire life is who it is that you want to marry. There is no bigger decision. And then after that, about children, I want every child to come into this world loved and with the same opportunity as every other child. So I want you to think about when you want to have children and when you're old enough and when you're, you're really truly ready. ready. Uh, when I married this young lady up here, my wife Mary, I had a job, I'd been in the Navy, I had a car, uh, I, I was ready for life. And I hope you'll be that way too. And I hope that you'll impart wisdom to your children and to your grandchildren. I hope that you will think about voting. Voting is one of the greatest opportunities we have uh, in life. It's a great privilege. And don't consider yourself a liberal or a conservative or a Republican or a Democrat. Go look at the issues. Think about the issues. Think about what is right and what is wrong and the things that you believe. So the final exam grade for me, I decided what I would do today is, uh, I'm 72 years old, what kind of grade would I give myself? Well, my daughter, I think, would give me an E. There's a special bond between a father and her daughter. So I'm going to give myself an E for my daughter. My wife, she knows me better than my daughter. <laughs> Not so sure of it. But she's put up with me for a long time, so let's just assume, Mary, that you'll give me an X. Satisfactory, you know, make some mistakes along the way, but nevertheless, satisfactory. My son, he's too much like me. You know, he is uh, a stickler for getting everything done perfectly. Get an N from him. The dog, 
you know, the dog doesn't get their ears rubbed long enough and whatever. I do give my puppy some uh, scraps from the food table, but, uh, you know, you've got to have to get an, an unsatisfactory from the dog. But are those grades really what's important in life? Or is what's really important in life the E for effort? And I've mentioned effort a couple of times. So what I want for each of you is to get an E, not necessarily for excellence, but I want you to get an E for effort. And I want you to be empathetic. I want you to always put yourself in the other person's uh, shoes. I've told people many times that there's one letter in the English alphabet that I'd like to turn upside down. And that letter is the letter M. And to get people to stop thinking about what's in it for me and what's in it for everybody else. So turn me into we. Think we. Think about what's good for everybody, not just what's good for yourself. And I think that's empathy. Put yourself in the other person's uh, shoes. And if you ever get an email from me, you'll see a little expression under my signature. And what it says is, the things we do for ourselves are gone when we are gone. But the things we do for others, those things are our legacy. The things we do for ourselves are gone when we are gone. The things that we do for others, those things are our legacy. So we're at the end. I want to tell you a little story. When my mother died 22 years ago, my sister and my brother and I were cleaning up some things in her desk at home. And my sister pulled out a uh, rubber band that had uh, seven letters. And she started reading the letters. One was the letter that I wrote to my mother when Mary and I first met and how happy I was, and how much Mary reminded me of my mother. Another letter was about uh, our first child being born. Another was when we first got married. Another one was on Mother's Day, a Christmas. And after my sister got through about the fifth of the seven letters, she burst into tears. And I said, Mary, what's the matter? She said, didn't mother love me too? Don't ever let that happen to you. Tell the people that have brought you to where you are, that have helped you along, that have given you advice, thank you. Tell them that you appreciate what they've done for you. And so that's my message to you. But you know, today is not only the last day or, or the first day of the rest of your life. Today's the first day of the rest of my life. And so may I like for you to come up. Come on. Then she can get out. I want you on stage. Please. I, uh, this is the first day of the rest of my life. And I have something I want to say to you. Okay. <laughs> I want to say to you, thank you. I want to say thank you for coming into my life 47 years ago. You remember that? I do, I do. <laughs> and then 46 years ago this month, you asked me a question. Oh, goodness. Do you remember what the question was? What's to become of us? What's to become of us? <laughs> and, and I answered you. 
when you ask me what's to become of us. He asked me to marry him. I asked him to marry him. <laughs> and so here we are. And, and 46 years uh, ago, next two months from now, we got married. Right. And I want to thank you for that. <laughs> and I want to thank you for two wonderful children and six wonderful grandchildren and for putting up with all of the evil things that I've done <laughs> and all of the things that I forgot to do. And if you ask me what's to become of us today, what would I say? <laughs> the, the best is yet to be. I tell Mary all the time, you know, we are, we are here today, and I will say to you, the best is yes to be, yet to be. Thank you. What did you got? Oh, my. Thank you. Now, that's the letter from me to you that after I'm dead and gone, <laughs> hope you'll have it. And I hope that uh, after you're gone, our children, our children will open it up and say, Daddy, love Mom. Uh -oh. Thank you. And I hope maybe our children will open it and say, Gosh, you know, Granddaddy actually loved Grandmama. <laughs> so the best Thank is you. yet to be. Yes. Thank you. The best is yet to be.